Out of all of the tutorials that I've ever done, today's is the coolest by far. I'm going to show you, without using side quest, without using developer mode, without using a phone or a computer, with using only your Quest 2. That's it, just your Quest 2, you're going to be able to play PC VR games. I know it sounds too good to be true, it isn't, I'm going to show you how to do it, so let's get right into it. The first step is to put on your Quest 2. Alright, good job. Step 2, go to the store and search Plutosphere. Make sure you type it in exactly correct. Don't, you know, misspell it or anything, because if you do, it won't show up. All right, now you got to just download it. Next, open up the Quest browser and go to dashboard.pluto.app. That's going to bring you to the Plutosphere website where you could either create an account or log in. Using this does cost about $2 an hour, but I put a link to the Discord below where the Plutosphere team is constantly giving away free playtime. I know it sucks it's not completely free, but they have to pay the server bill somehow, and at the end of the day, it's a pretty fair price for what you're getting. If you want to buy some playtime, just click buy tokens and then select how many you want. I would recommend starting off only getting an hour or two at first just to make sure it works good with you. The quality of your experience will definitely range depending on how good your Wi-Fi is and your location to the nearest AWS server. Once you have the tokens in your account, you can turn on the virtual computer. Each time you start it after not using it for a while, it can take about 10 minutes to turn on, but you won't be charged during that time. If more than 10 minutes goes by and it's still not on, Toggle the switch off and back on and it should be up and running within about 30 seconds. Once it's on, click the button that says go to desktop. If when you click that you see a loading animation but the desktop screen doesn't actually load, quit out of it and then click the go to desktop button again. It might take a couple of tries but eventually it will load. When it does, click the teal colored tab on the left of the window and then click the Oculus logo. You can then click the keyboard icon and enter your Steam login details. Once logged in, click the magnifying glass and search for Steam and click it to open it. Then search for the game you want to download whether it be through the store or through your library. I personally had trouble selecting a game from the sidebar and I found it easier to use the right hand side of the Steam screen. In this example, I'm going to download Half-Life Alex, so I clicked it and then clicked install. I then took the headset off for about 30 minutes and just let it sit and install the game. When the game finishes downloading then you could quit out of the virtual computer and go back to the Plutosphere dashboard. On the Plutosphere dashboard click the eyeball icon and that's going to reveal the IP address of your virtual computer. You're going to have to write it down or type it into your phone or do something so you remember it because we're going to need it for the next step. Once you have it written down or remembered, open the Plutosphere app we downloaded at the beginning of the video. Click connect and then enter the IP address I just told you to remember. Make sure you include the periods in the correct spots, it won't work if you try to enter just the numbers, and then once you have it typed in, click connect. It might crash the first time or even take a couple of tries of clicking connect, but it will eventually launch Steam VR. Then all you have to do is click the Oculus button on the left controller to open up the Steam VR dashboard and there you'll see any games you downloaded. Click the game you want to play and it should launch. Here's some gameplay of Half-Life Alex. It definitely started off kind of rough, but it fixed itself after a couple of minutes. Whenever you're done playing, make sure to turn off your virtual computer, otherwise it will run your timeout. I don't know about you all, but I think that is one of the coolest things I've ever seen a Quest 2 do. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, this is Andy's VR Reviews.